district attorney at our desk doesn't practice in Mexico, but again, she is well trained in the law. It's our friend Michelle Suskauer. We welcome you back to America's Thanks. Forum, Michelle. As as we take a look at what's going on in this case and going into court, I guess in Tijuana yesterday. Right. Uh, Give us what you believe went on in that courtroom. Well, I know that the family was very, very hopeful that he was going to be released yesterday. Um, that did not happen, and there's another hearing that's scheduled for next month. But what happened was, again, just as Miranda said, it was closed, but he had really his first opportunity to speak to the judge and for his lawyer. And this is, again, his, his new legal team. I think he's gone through several iterations of legal teams right. for a variety of reasons. He, he didn't trust them, didn't like them. This is someone who I think he's very comfortable with, someone who I think is me much more well-versed in, in public relations and putting out some very, very positive information about him, but basically um, really talked about not only probably his background and the fact as to what he was suffering from PTSD but that there may have been issues with the translator there's some information that came out about um, about the search warrant or Mexico's version of the search warrant right and we want to go into that because the the date is a little there there's speculation that they changed the date right the date search right, warrant. The, right the date of the search warrant for his vehicle which which had the weapons which had all of his possessions um, was dated several days before the Marine was actually in Mexico. So that sort of raises some significant questions about the search and about their system in general if we already didn't have questions about their system. Well, Andrew Tamarisi's mother, Jill, has appeared on this program on several occasions. And, and during her last visit here, she made mention of the fact there he is at the station right there literally on the border and he declares to the Mexican agents hey I have these firearms in my car which are legal on the right. American side of the border the Mexican agents insist that he drives across and then they arrest him I, I would imagine the the international notion of criminal defense I would imagine that his attorney Fernando Benitez is going to make a big deal about that actual exchange absolutely and you know this case as well as other cases where we've had na American nationals who are being held in, in jail and also uh, for example on Amanda Knox that we've spoken about before and, and is in the news really highlights to me and I think highlights to so many uh, the rights and privileges that we have in this country versus what individuals do not have, especially what we expect our citizens are going to have in other countries, and they don't. Um, so it's, it's, it's disconcerting. But again, we're hopeful that he is going to be released in August. Um, but again, that, that's moving in that direction. That's what his attorney has said, that he's hopeful it does have to play out um, again it, I'm sure that there's a political power play here as well and that they're flexing their muscle um, and um, we certainly don't want to insult what they're doing in in Mexico but again we're very concerned that his rights have been violated um, both for the search and the way that they've treated him and and the problems potentially with the translation of what he allegedly said you know despite everything though his mother is still claiming this to be kind of a victory what happened yesterday to be a success. Why do you think that is? Well, it certainly wasn't. He wasn't released, so that wasn't the ultimate victory. But I think having the opportunity, the platform to speak to the judge and right. to tell his side of the story, although we don't have verbatim what he said, I think is a significant victory. Actually getting there so that that position can be then moved forward. He's spoken, and now we're actually moving in the right direction as opposed to just being stale and sitting around being in first in general population, then being in solitary, being chained to his bed. I mean, having actually going into court to be able to face the judge for the first time, I think is significant. So that's why I think she sees that as a victory. I agree. And, and in facing the judge, it, it raises this question, Michelle. And, and again, we want to restate, you, you don't practice law south that's of right. the border. <laughs> But what is your perception of judicial discretion in Mexico? Is, is there a situation where the judge, upon hearing the case, will, will simply go uh, with his thoughts, with what he hears, and then issue a ruling? I, again, 
with that proviso, since I do not practice uh, Mexican law, right. um, that that is the understanding and that's the information that's come out. Um, that there is discretion, there is great discretion here in terms of what this court can do. But again, it has not happened yet. There's going to be another hearing. There may be several other hearings, but nothing is going to happen until next month at the earliest. Okay. And you know, you, earlier you mentioned about weapons though, like the specific weapons that were found in his truck. Do you find it odd that he had basically all of his belongings with him in that truck at that time? And we know he suffered from PTSD. That's why he went over to San Diego. Do you find that odd at all? Well, you know, there's, I think there are some questions here, but again, this is someone who is, is suffering and, and it's not just, you know, people sort of throw around this whole PTSD as this, oh, well, you know, it's, it's a significant diagnosis. Um, and he was seeking treatment. It's my understanding that that first day was a day that he really started on the path of going into uh, group therapy and facing the demons that he needed to face as a result of his exposure during his uh, two tours of duty. So, uh, so for us to judge why is that strange that he would have all of his possessions, I'm not going to because I can't put myself in his shoes as to what he really was going through with his diagnosis. But if you Ma were his... Michelle, uh, sorry, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry, just we want to point out to our viewers what they're seeing on the screen right now is the website uh, that Jill Tamarisi has put together basically uh, d for legal defense quite frankly, trying to help fund this. This is not an inexpensive proposition, which, which brings one other thing up. You, you used the word earlier, and it's, it's something I've been involved in, something that you're, you're a lawyer, but that's politics, the political angle on this. And by that, I mean the proper role of the Secretary of State and the Commander-in-Chief. When Jill Tamarisi was last with us, she said that, that Secretary of State Kerry mentioned it once on his recent visit to Mexico and depersonalized it, calling her son, quote, an issue. Is, could, could our government be playing a more active and assertive role to bring this Marine back home? And again, that is what we have all heard. But what happens behind the scenes politically uh, is not something that we necessarily are privy to. And, and it is a very, very delicate situation when we're trying to, quote unquote, interfere with the judicial system of another sovereign nation. And I think we need to be very, very careful with, and I, and I think that Kerry was being very careful with what was said. But again, we don't know what is going on behind the scenes in terms of trying to move this forward to ultimately get him out. Do we, we need to walk a very careful line, which, which I'm sure he's doing in terms of not insulting what they do, not respecting you know, their laws. Absolutely. Right. And so again, does that mean that nothing is going on behind the scenes? It certainly doesn't. We just may not be privy right. you'll, to you'll it. Forgive me, but to have the Mexican president come to a joint session of Congress and lecture our senators and Congress members on how we should run our border and to step on eggshells in this situation is a little tough. I appreciate the distinction, but I think a lot of people are frustrated with kind of duplicitous behavior. Well, we want to move on now to another case that's been going on. Um, but obviously, there's been a lot of talk about Oscar Pistorius, the case going on in South Africa. Can you give us an update on that? Sure. Well, uh, several days ago, this week, the defense finally rested. So what happens next? Right. What happens in, in South Africa is both uh, the government and the defense are going to present some written closing arguments and then there's actually going to be, we're going to see, since this is televised, actual closing arguments. And then this goes to the judge and the judge's two assistants basically to make a decision as to whether he is going to be found guilty of this premeditated murder or a lesser offense um, or not guilty. And so this is something, again, this has been going on for so, so long, and there's going to be more delays because there's a delay now until uh, the written closing arguments are presented. Then there'll be a delay in between that and the actual oral closing arguments. And then the court is going to have take a recess to make a decision. So will we find out in August? I really don't know. I would, I would have thought that this would have been over well, already. By now, it does seem um, very long. People are shocked that it has gone on as long. But again, another completely different judicial system than ours. And right. one constant we all have to obey is something you mentioned, that four-letter word, time. 
unfortunately, <laughs> Michelle Suskauer, we're out of it right now, but we sure. appreciate your expertise in the law. And we'd like to have your comments on the Marine jailed in Mexico and the Pistorius trial. Tweet us at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.